IU58841 is a topical anti-androgen that shows a lot of promise with treating male pattern baldness, but it's still sold as a research chemical only. So let's dive into the data and find out the reasons why, and I'll share my protocol that has minimal side effects, as opposed to oral DHT blockers like finasteride that can have many. So there are a couple of studies on IU58841, uh, one involving nude mice where they transplanted hair from balding men and then uh, compared it to the control group, you treating it with this RU compound and seeing uh, it, what, what, how, what percentage of hairs entered that second growth phase cycle. And there was a significant difference when compared to the control group and it even outperformed finasteride in terms of blocking DHT at the source. And also in 2002, there's a study using human skin graft cultures and it was compared to finasteride and it actually outperformed finasteride for blocking a DHT in those hair follicle receptors. But obviously we're only talking about treated areas here, so finasteride will go systemic, that's the difference. And around that period of time, there's a company called Pro Straken who they actually went through phase one and phase two trials with RU just to uh, try and get it to market. And they actually dropped out and they, they cited it was down to financial uh, strategy reasons. And I believe around this period of time, Finasteride was becoming really popular and there weren't any scare stories about its uh, side effects. So I think the mud market was very much saturated. And I think it's a shame now that the time has passed for it to go through FDA approval because it's just not financially viable for any company. Just making it more of an underground research chemical, which I don't think it should be. But fortunately, there's a lot of anecdotal reports with it and very minimal side effects. Some people get redness around the scalp, but that can actually be down to the carrier that comes with it, whether that's some form of ethanol, um, like a lot of people use minoxidil, that's what I'm using, 5% minoxidil. And the reduced shedding can even be noticed within the first two to four weeks, which is impressive. And then some people even report like regrowth over like, you know, three to six months. Some people actually report the opposite of shedding in that first period, but obviously minoxidil, that can cause that in that first stage as well. And yeah, it's particularly effective, you know, in the front area, you know, temples and crown. And, uh, but what about the midsection? And that's where I think using some kind of ketoconazole shampoo, like an anti-androgen, it might be mild, but you're just trying to target those areas that are less high risk. Check out our 12 month rejuvenation program where every three months we look at 225 different bar markers and get your future vitality optimized. There's even a six month break clause if your situation was to change. So that gets me into my protocol with RU5841. So I get five grams of it. And then I divide that three ways into three 60 mil bottles of minoxidil. And so that works out to what, just under 1.7 grams per bottle. And so the strength actually works out to 2.8% strength. So for some people that would be strong enough, other people you'd probably want to split that five grams into two bottles. So two and a half grams per one. And just to get the strength up, depending on how aggressive your hair loss is. I used to use the foam minoxidil in the morning as well, but I think it's overkill with using this Revita shampoo, although it is very handy when doing the microneedling, because I do it at a depth of one millimeter, so I think that would be, be at the risk of building up systemic uh, RU5841 if I was to apply that on the same day. But by doing the microneedling in the evening while I'm watching TV, then at first thing in the morning when I wash my hair with a Revita shampoo, then I do have some uh, improvement in scalp permeability, while also increasing blood flow and stem cell activation in those areas. And I even do it around the sideburns because they're high risk areas of gray hairs. For myself, I'm using around one mil per day. So then that means that those three bottles will actually last me six months. Well, maybe even a little bit longer because I only do it six days a week. On the day off, I'll actually do micro needling just to improve blood flow in those particular high risk areas. But some people, they have a higher coverage area they need to use, so it might be even up to two mil a day. Because I wash my hair in the morning, I'll apply this RU formula in the evening. So I've got protection overnight. And then I, when I wash my hair, then I don't get the greasy residue, which I find I do get with minoxidil. Not with the foam stuff, but with the, the liquid stuff. I don't like that oily feeling from the liquid stuff and then obviously in the morning if I'm washing my hair the shampoo I use is Revita shampoo and it's got all kinds of mild anti-androgens in it but also growth factors that stimulate uh, blood flow it's got copper peptides that support angiogenesis you know the formation of new blood vessels there's actually over 20 goodies in there that not only stimulate blood flow to the scalp but also uh, can prevent greys in the first place uh, like EUK134 which is a mimetic of catalase and superoxide dismutase and catalase deficiency in the scalp is a like, leading cause of greyness. 
I actually started using Revita all the way back in 2012. So I think that has prevented a lot of hair loss that would have happened. I also took 500 milligrams of salt palmetto for years and that's a, a mild uh, 5AR inhibitor. Uh, nothing compared to say finasteride do do or dutasteride, but then it does have lower side effects too. And so that gets me onto um, other parts of my protocol. I do take dutasteride three days a week spread out. And yeah, a lot of people don't uh, fare very well with dutasteride or finasteride for that matter. Obviously dutasteride is that bit stronger working off two different receptors. But uh, yeah, say with finasteride, a lot of people just don't react well. They, some people can, they might just end up splitting the pills four ways. So you're doing a quarter milligram a day just to get some suppression of DHT, but uh, not get the full side effects from it. And for myself, yeah, I can get away with dutasteride. It does dull my libido just a little bit, but um, I, I can kind of get away with it. But I, I believe because I'm on TRT as well, that does cancel out some of it. Because say, if my testosterone was, um, my, my, previously it was like low, like low normal. And so I've basically doubled it up some, like really, you know, like high on the reference range. And so if you're doubling a testosterone on paper, in theory, your DHT will be about 50% higher. So if you're, crushing it down, say in my case, by taking it three days a week, probably around the 90% mark I've crushed it. So there is some DHT in circulation as no hormone should really be crushed down to nil as it can have negative feedback loops elsewhere. So if you're someone that's had issues with say depression or libido or impotence, then it's quite high risk to take something like finasteride or dutasteride. And that's where I think this IRU5841 compound really comes in, especially when you combine it with one of these ketoconazole shampoos. I think that's where the synergy comes in, those two things together, avoiding that systemic blockade of androgen receptors. And starting one of these 5-alpha reductase inhibitors like dutasteride or finasteride is quite high risk. You could argue it's a bit like starting TRT because to be on it long enough to get the benefits of reducing, you know, shedding hairs, getting some regrowth, then you're also getting the risk of side effects. And much like with starting TRT, it's no impulse decision. You really need to be sure that it's what you wanna do, where you're going with it. And say, if you are in the early stages of hair loss, I think it's a scale you need to go down. So you do these things that have minimal side effects, first of all, and see how you fare with that. And if it doesn't work that well, or you know your hair loss gets more aggressive, then the risk to reward ratio becomes a bit better for blocking at DHT systemically. As it's no joke, uh, it's called post finasteride syndrome. I've come across it. Uh, the, you know, it does happen where sometimes people, it's in their head where they might have done uh, finasteride for a week and say they've got it, which is just is silly, really. But yeah, when someone's on it for a few months, then it can have long lasting effects, especially with dutasteride, it's got an even longer half-life. So if you do get impotence from it, then that can last a long time. Moving on to cost, neither of these interventions are very expensive. At the current rate I'm using my RU, it comes to what, about $10 a month, plus the minoxidil, so not, not a great deal. And then uh, moving on to uh, the Revita shampoo, I, I get over like two months use of it, two and a half months. So it works out to around like uh, about 12 pounds a month for the Revita shampoo. So not, again, not that expensive. While I think RU5841 is unnecessarily sold as a research compound, caution must be adhered to because it, yeah, it is a research chemical and uh, you know the different suppliers have uh, different standards i've even heard of people where they switched uh, like a different to a different product and the hair that they regained from taking ru actually fell out because it was an inferior product so i get my ru5841 from swiss chems i think it's very reasonably priced and uh, i've been using them for over two and a half years i've got no complaints with that product I even tested one of their uh, peptides epitalon so if you've got any feedback with using ru5841 then please do comment down below just always interested to hear your response to it or maybe you're combining it with low dose or like a, one of these 5AR inhibitors you know whether it be finasteride dutasteride or something at milder more natural like salt palmetto so if you like that video then check out this one here on my protocol for preventing or even reversing early stage gray hair thanks for watching see you next time